Welcome to the stream. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. Happy Monday. Welcome back to Adobe Live. Uh, hello, I'm seeing so many people in chat. <laughs> Paco, Sam, hi. Jay, Eva, nice to see you guys. Val, welcome. Well, today I am joined by the fabulous Steffi Lynn. Um, she is a hand lettering artist. How are you doing, Steffi? I'm good. I'm good. I'm nervous but good. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all are. It's okay. <laughs> we'll be fine. Um, but before we get into our project today, let's take a look at the schedule. So before this stream, we had a photo, the Photoshop daily creative challenge with Jesus. Right now uh, we have Steffi Lynn. Later after our stream, we will have the Illustrator daily creative challenge with Paul Traney, then mobile app design with Andrea then XD daily creative challenge with Andrea. That's funny. We're going to have two XD challenges, <laughs> two XD streams with two different Andreas. And then after that, we will end the day with doodle therapy with Alice Lee. All right, um, Steffi, if you want to go ahead and maybe um, give yourself a little intro, show off some of your artwork and maybe explain a little bit about your project that you're going to be working on today. Um, well, hi, I'm Steffi Lynn. I am a hand letter and illustrator. Um, I also paint murals and do um, live events. Um, yeah, I, my work is inspired by color, feelings, human connections. So um, you can see on my Instagram that it's very colorful. And a lot of my um, quotes that I hand letter are, you know, about positivity and motivating people and just um, reminding people to stay hopeful and be happy and to be grateful and yeah and oh today i'm working on um a quote um i found the other day it's stop choosing what isn't choosing you so um, i'm gonna do a little fun um lettering of that awesome i love that your work is so beautiful your color palettes are just fantastic oh, i was you. looking through your instagram before we went live this week um and your murals are just so lovely uh so yeah Thanks. yeah of course so yeah we can uh start getting into sketching if you're ready yeah um okay so um my sketching is usually pretty um messy and <laughs> rough so um mine is too don't worry i think i think the messier the better <laughs> Um, well, this is going to be great then. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I like to use like this ruler tool down mm -hmm. here to make my guides. I don't know if um, that, there we go. How long have you um, been doing hand lettering? Has this something been something that you got in from the beginning when you started doing artwork or is it something that you kind of found along the way in your art journey? Um, I, well, when I was in, um, like grade school, like middle school, high school, I would always like doodle on notebooks and like binders, sure. like this is my band book, my world history book. But, um, I never, I didn't think that like lettering or doing illustrative type and stuff like that would become useful in the future. Um, I originally went to school for illustration in mm. graphic design and it just like I just somehow found lettering to to come natural to me and um I started doing like more personalizations and like menus and events and mm. stuff like that and then it just became slowly developed into like just digital lettering illustration that's awesome. Uh, Voodoo Val in, uh, in chat says, I never really used the ruler tool, so this is really cool to see it being used. 
Yeah, I don't, um, it's actually a new trick. I just found out like last week. So I'm really excited about it. Before I would just like draw, you know, lines like this really messy. Um, but I am very excited about the ruler tool. Yeah, the ruler looks helpful. awesome. Um, are you just, I, I actually don't have an iPad. I just ordered my very first iPad. So I'm going to be getting into Fresco soon, but it looks like you're just uh, kind of moving the ruler around with your, with your fingers. Yeah. There. So you can like rotate it and, and I'll kind of like, like you'll lock for 90 degrees That's and they'll so lock cool. for um, zero. Very cool. And then just make another layer to start my super messy <laughs> sketch. Um, Anissa in chat says, hi, how do you access the ruler tool? I'm new to Fresco. Oh, so it is on this like bottom right hand corner. Um, you, it's like a, there's like a little icon and you just press it and it'll show up and it'll go away when you press it again. Awesome. So Steffi, I noticed on your Instagram, uh, your Instagram handle is have a nice day. And I noticed that you have, um, that quote, uh, within your branding, uh, quite often. I was curious if there was a, any kind of backstory to that and how that kind of became your thing. Um, <laughs> so my Instagram name used to be, I think just my name, but I wanted to, um, I, this is when I first graduated, I wanted to, um, open a shop and like make work and sell stuff online. And I didn't know what to call it. Cause I didn't want it to be Steffi Lynn. Um, just cause I don't really want a shop named after me mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, I wanted something easy and positive and something that um, would it be difficult to figure out and just very straightforward. And I was actually sitting on my couch in my old apartment near Pratt and I was eating takeout and the bag said, have a nice day on it. Oh, and I was like, that's it. Have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> that's such a cool backstory. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it worked out. I know that's a lot of people go and do a lot of research and, and, that is amazing. I just, it was really um, lucky that it just, you know, came to me when I was eating. Yeah. Like, I think I was eating Thai food. <laughs> That's awesome. It just kind of spoke to you, right? <laughs> yeah. So, honestly, I, so, I am left-handed and I have never been great at cursive. So watching you do this hand lettering is <laughs> really impressive to me. <laughs> oh, thank you. I yeah. actually got it from my dad. Um, oh, he nice. has really amazing penmanship and he would used to like um, give me crap for writing really messy. So <laughs> thanks dad, if you're watching. <laughs> He's not. <laughs> Um, I was also curious about your color palette. Are, are those kind of, uh, colors that you've always used, uh, within your work or have you, has it evolved as you've kind of gone through your, um, gone through your career? Um, I think it's evolved a little bit, but, um, not too much. I've always just loved color, which is funny because I used to not dress in any color. And um, I would just always dress black and white. Um, and it didn't really match like who, what I look like. Cause a lot of people, a lot of artists dress like their art. And for a while I was just very simple and minimal. Um, it wasn't until like the last two or three years I got more colorful in my like, you know, um, with my wardrobe and like personal life. And um, yeah, but I think in the beginning I might have been a little bit more in, into the pinks and corals, but, and I hated using purple and yellow, which is <laughs> so discriminating. <laughs> um, but now I love lilacs and orange yellows and um, those colors, but always been bright. Awesome. Also guys, if you haven't, if you guys have any questions for Steffi, feel free to put them in chat. Um, I'd love to uh, relay them to you and we can maybe get those answered for you. Um, and yeah, when I was younger, um, I did not dress in a lot of color either. And now I have, as, as my art has developed, I have definitely grown to love color more. <laughs> yeah, um, 
I think I just like wanted to be inconspicuous. Mm. But now I'm like patterns on patterns on patterns more. Don't know what that says about me, maybe. <laughs> but <laughs> the change has been good. Creative, eccentric. Yes. <laughs> Also, you guys, um, if you're watching over on YouTube, why don't you come over here and join us on the main chat on Behance? We would love to have you come join the family. Um, we are having a total party over here, of course, as always, every day. Um, and also, I wanted to remind you guys that later in the stream, we will be doing an artist spotlight. It is Monday. Um, so we will be spotlighting one of you awesome, awesome artists in our community. And... Um, uh, if you would like to um, uh, spotlight someone or someone that you know, or one of your friends, you can check out the artist spotlight tab above the chat. So Steffi, are you kind of just like coming up with this on the spot, like the composition of it or? I am. Uh, yeah, just kind of like messing around with it and seeing what sticks. Yeah, I like to use, um, I really like, uh, choosing quotes that have um, like the same line so it's like one let uh, one word is shorter and then the next two lines are a little bit longer and it ends with a shorter word so like it seems a little bit more balanced and symmetrical sure so like it'll end with like you which is like the same almost the same amount of letters as stop so it's like short longer 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 shorter um, but yeah, um, it's all on the spot, which is probably why I'm taking so much longer than I wanted to. Just no, it take, as, <laughs> take as much time as you need. I, I really love in, uh, watching your sketching process, honestly, and I'm sure everyone else in chat does as well. Yeah, so I usually just, um, I use this like really rough brush. It's like a charcoal pencil brush. Um, it helps me just think that it's like, it's just psychological. It's like, I'm sketching with a pencil. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, it almost looks like a, like a really thick, dull pencil. I love that look. Oh, there goes my dog. Sorry about that. She's barking. <laughs> Hey, Alberto, Anthony, welcome to the stream, you guys. General Kenobi is in chat. It's an honor to have you here. Mallory, welcome. Nice to see you guys. Val says, yes, we love to see your sketching. <laughs> so don't worry okay. about it. Okay. <laughs> I think when I, sometimes when I post time lapse on Instagram, like the first sentence of the, um, my caption is like, my sketching is so like bad. I'm sorry. And I apologize for it all the time. So probably just accept it yeah to, oh my gosh i'm so sorry you guys my dog celebrity appearance from the dog muting my mic and unmuting my mic so i don't rip headphone users um anthony jackson says we all love to see the artist processes oh, um guys. and <laughs> i i totally understand <laughs> that feeling of um being insecure about your sketching process. Um, but then I think about uh, the types of things that I personally love to see from artists. Like I love to see the finished product, but I also really love to see the process. I love to see those super early on uh, rough sketches, even the thumbnails, just because I'm, it's a uh, curiosity to, to see how that artist got from the very beginning to the very end. Um, so I think every artist feels that self-conscious feeling of um, wanting everything to be perfect on social perfect, media. Perfect, yeah. yeah. Uh, but really, in all reality, like I think our uh, everyone wants to be able to kind of pick your brain and see how you got to that point. I think what um, I so I will sketch it, and when I outline it, it's so it's like not exact. So people with OCD will watch it and be like. <laughs> You're not drawing on the line. <laughs> they get so frustrated. Okay. Tiana, good morning. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing? 
Christy says, choosing the colors are scary. <laughs> I used oh, to feel that yes. way as well. Yes, I totally relate to that. So now you're just kind of going through and kind of like thickening up each letter to yeah, kind of give I'm it some volume. Yeah, trying to decide mm -hmm, like which one is going to be like bolder. Sure. Like, um, like stop is going to be block letters. I mean, obviously, um, this is not that blocky, but when I draw it out, finalize it, um, it's just easier for me to see what I want to do. And do you kind of usually uh, like to use different line weights for um, each quote? Or do you kind of usually stick to like one, like one thickness for all of your wording? Um, I kind of change it up, but it all ends up looking very similar because I think in my subconscious is just like, this looks right. And it just, um, but I don't have like any settings like written down or, um, like, you know, a note section that's like, oh, this brush is what I use for X, Y, Z. Just always end it ends up looking very similar, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a question in chat. Andrea says, hi, Steffi. I love the new murals you did. Are you scared of heights hi. and how do you paint on such a big surface? Oh, um, I am not scared of heights. I am scared of heights when it's dark and I can't see what's below me. Um, so I guess I'm scared of the dark. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, so yeah, um, the murals I've been doing, so usually I use a, like a grid method and I've done anywhere from like t dropping strings from like the top of the roof and just marking them down. And I literally make like my own um, grid on the wall or um, there is like the lazy doodle method that a lot of muralists and street artists use which is just like um, so basically you'll mock up your illustration or whatever um, design you want to put on the wall and then you um, like if the wall is like 10 by 10 um, make you know scale it down to a you know one by one image on your um, iPad and then you can just like make little markings like oh a heart in the corner means that is where the hand will go mm. um, the circle over here is where um, like a flower will go so you do like this weird messy doodle um, I'm trying to figure out who does a really good messy doodle sketch um, detour he is a muralist and he does like portraits he does oh wow um, if you go onto his Instagram, um, Detour, D-E-T-O-U-R, um, he has some photos of just like numbers and letters on a wall and it literally looks like random like <laughs> symbols, but it's very, um, for him, he'll be like, oh, the beginning of the number one to the letter A is how big the face will be. Wow, that's so interesting. Yeah. Um, I used to do it like that, but it's a little bit hard with letters. Um, so I started gridding with, um, you know, a string or I use, this is going to sound weird, <laughs> but I use um, a, I use a, so I use my body as scale. <laughs> so it'll be like, this letter will be Steffi size and it's Steffi five tall. foot one. Yeah, one Steffi, Steffi tall. tall. <laughs> or I will make like markings on my arm which is so, it's kind of, it's kind of funny because I just have <laughs> random marks of like paint on my arm. Steffi roller. Like, oh, yes. <laughs> I'm like, this arm length will be the letter E. And then I'll just like move my arm around. And so I know that each letter is like the right size. <laughs> That's so fascinating. I love that. <laughs> Such a weird method, but it like works for me because like I paint with my whole body. That's basically how like um, why I really like painting murals because it's like you're not just painting with your like wrist mm -hmm. you're literally moving your whole body and your arms and rotating um, to make this big drawing this big painting so using Steffi method Steffi body size <laughs> method <laughs> works <laughs> that's so cool have you ever used like a projector or anything to like put your sketches up I on have. the wall I definitely have, um, it's like the surface is a cylinder 
or um, it is depends on time. Um, I I had for the long, longest time I was very against using projectors because in my head I feel like that's really I feel like that you're like doing an extra step for no mm -hmm. reason um, because you're like sketching it. You're projecting right. it, sketching it, and redrawing it again. And it's like, it makes it, for me, if I, it mentally made me feel like, oh, this is like an extra step I didn't have to take. Like the setup takes forever. Sure. And um, I was just really opposed. But um, as I started painting more murals and I needed assistance, um, I started projecting a little bit more because um, I mean, I can't expect like people that I'm painting with to know and understand my method. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> so I started, yeah, I started projecting more, which is like, um, projecting's great. Um, I just personally wasn't the biggest fan, but it really does help, you know, with speed. If you have like someone else that's painting with you mm -hmm. and you do get, you know, you don't have to guess what's about to happen because it's literally, you know, projected in front of you and you can just like paint. Yeah. Uh, D says, haven't done much murals yet, uh, much murals yet, um, but fascinating stories. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Chrissy says, Steffi, do you have some sort of paper thin surface on your iPad? I think uh, maybe they mean like, um, like maybe oh, like a paper um, texture, texture on your iPad. Yeah. I don't. Um, I've always wanted to um, try one, but I never gotten around to it. So the, the um, very slick surface of the iPad doesn't really bother you too much? No, not really. I think it's because I never actually tried it with mm. the screen protector or t textured so I don't have anything to compare it to I mean besides like an actual pen and paper pencil and paper um before you started using fresco were you a mainly a, a pen and paper type of artist were you a traditional artist I was um I did a lot of like chalks yeah I paint them on wood and like chalkboards mm -hmm. um but I always forget how what I'm doing right here. Oh, um, <laughs> totally understand. <laughs> yeah, I started doing um, digital illustration only. I want to say two years ago. Oh wow! But before I would like draw and um, on paper, and then um, scan it in. By the way, you guys, you should totally check out Steffi's store. I was looking at her stuff last night and I kind of fell in love with her glass coffee mugs. <laughs> oh, yeah, those are coming back this week. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. There you go, guys. I really love there was one Here's that said <laughs> there was one that said uh, creative juice, which I thought was super cute. And I was wondering, you guys, if if any of you guys in chat, what is your creative juice? Do you drink tea? Do you drink coffee? Do you need caffeine at all? Or are you just a crazy morning person? <laughs> Um, Anthony says, what brush are you using? This is the charcoal pencil variant. So I usually use charcoal pencil. It's just very easy to sketch with. Yeah, that texture is really awesome. I love that. I'm going to have to try that one out. I really want to like um, delete some layers and ch I changed my mind on something. Oh, but, yeah? Um, sorry, guys. I'm deleting these. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally fine. Again, loving seeing the artist process. Tried something out, didn't always work. And you know, I mean, that's just kind of how it goes. So now we're now we're gonna work on a different path down this yes. down this uh, art piece. I've been really into um, creating interesting borders around um, lettering and just like arches. Um, so, let's see. Uh, everyone is putting all of their creative juice in chat. We got tea, coffee, coffee, tea, uh, coffee, coffee, and or tea, chai tea. Oh yeah, I love me some good chai tea. Chai, yes. 
Val says, coffee. Every morning I wake up in a fit like Jim Carrey. Can we chop a chop a chop? General Kenobi says, bantha milk, of course. <laughs> Christy says, I am so impressed. <laughs> no, thanks. I'm like, I'm not impressed with myself right now. I'm stressed out. <laughs> but thank you. You. <laughs> you are doing fabulous, Steffi. <laughs> no worries. I love this arch. It's a really nice frame. Yeah, I really want an arched doorway, but oh, I don't yeah. think I can do that in New York without owning a house and mm. being wealthy. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you lived in New York? Um, I moved here eight years ago for uh, school. I went to Pratt mm. um, and I just never left. I do travel to Austin um, where I grew up very, very often. So I do get like a nice break from the city from time to time. Everyone's still saying coffee, coffee, coffee. Can't wait for cocoa weather. Oh, I totally agree. Love me. Love me some hot chocolate as well. And uh, hot apple cider. Well, I can't, I need to like, like start figuring out why I don't like hot apple, apple cider because when you describe it to me, I'm like, oh, that sounds amazing. But then when I drink it, I'm like, this is just like warm apple juice and it feels, makes me feel weird. <laughs> like, have you ever had <laughs> homemade hot apple cider or is it like, maybe that's bucks? it. It's always like from like Starbucks or yeah. I... no, you need some homemade. <laughs> okay. I'm going to find someone. Yes. I'm going to put it on my story and be like, who wants to make me some apple cider <laughs> <laughs> and send it to me. <laughs> Um, just seeing what I would like to do next. Uh, Anthony says, Austin, Texas, cool. That's where I'm from. Oh yeah, I've lived there for 18 years. Um, the best city ever. Um, I actually lived in Texas for a few years when I was younger. I lived in the Fort Worth area. Okay, um, near Dallas. Yeah. Yeah. I um, own an Instagram museum in Dallas. And um, so I've been to Fort Worth a few times for mm. like random like mural jobs here and there while I'm in town. Very cool. I'm drawing this like sun. Oh my God, you can probably not even see what I'm doing. So messy. <laughs> it's awesome. It looks great. Also, guys, I wanted to remind you in about an hour or so, we'll probably be doing the artist spotlight. Um, if you would like to nominate yourself or someone else in the community, please feel free to check out the link um, in the tab above the chat. And also, if you are over on YouTube, don't forget to uh, head on over to Behance, uh, where we are having our main party chat. <laughs> We'd yeah, love party. to party. Ooh. Woo. We'd love to have you over here. <laughs> I think. Uh, Voodoo Val says, what is an Instagram museum? Um, so let's see how to describe it. I feel like actually a good question. I didn't yeah. know something like that existed. <laughs> So basically, I um, it is like an interactive space that has a bunch of different rooms um, that are different themed and people can go in and take photos. Um, we have, so the one I own and created is called Museum of Memories. And so it is inspired by like my childhood, just any anyone's childhood, just like cartoons and cereal, um, birthday cake. Um, just fun 90s, 2000s childhood <laughs> memories. Sure. And um, like one of the rooms is this giant ball pit of cereal with a, um, a large like carton of milk spilling into it with um, marshmallow pillows. So it looks like you're living and swimming in a giant bowl of cereal. That's so fun. Yeah. So it's so kind of like, like different, 
like a creative like area photo. where you can take yeah. photos and stuff. That's so mm -hmm. fun. I love that. How long have you have you had that going on? Um, I've had it for how long have I had this for? Um, last year was we opened last June, so mm. a little bit over a year, and um, we actually. So we have one in Dallas and I actually got to open one in the Mall of America. Oh, wow. Except it closed oh. eight days after the pandemic hit. So oh, we were no. We open for eight-ish days. And that was a bummer, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. But, yeah, I um, it's really fun because I you see um, – I, we get to change it every season. So um, last year we had Halloween and we did um, like murals that were like funny puns. Like I'll never ghost you. <laughs> um, you will always be my boo. Um, and Christmas was really fun. And Valentine's Day, we got um, big installations and I made life-size doll boxes. Mm. So people can be like life-size dolls inside these like Barbie inspired boxes. That's so cool. Um, I forgot how to merge layers. Oh, just kidding. I figured <laughs> it out. I mean, this is grouping, out. but it's okay. Um, grouping works. I love your um, little star shapes. Those are super cute. Oh, thank you. Um, I don't know where, I think I was looking at old ads and I saw a bunch of them and I was like very inspired by them and I started doing them more. Uh, Octavia says, what advice do you give to someone starting on hand lettering? Um, just practice muscle memory. Um, I think that's like probably the most important part. Um, just like getting used to like connecting letters um, and like how your wrist moves and just like the literal, literal muscle memory of that. Cause that will be very useful. Um, Cause then they'll just start come really naturally to you. Um, and um, I think that's like, that's my, the only, that the first advice that I think of because it's at the end of the day, it's really all about like practice and um you can also like print out alphabets and just like build letters off of on top of those oh yeah sure i've i've definitely um like considered doing something like that to try to practice my cursive because i i really want to try to at least um start to get into some kind of topography work or hand lettering um i think that would be a lot of fun a little bit different than yeah. what i normally do yeah, it's just like a nice addition to any work too. Yeah. Um, cause like you can be, oh, oops, I just turned off my. Um... <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I hope you guys saw my passcode. <laughs> just, <laughs> I, just I don't think in. we did. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, yeah, you can like be in, oh gosh. Okay, cool. I was like worried that I was going to show my passcode, but you can um, do like really beautiful illustrations and make them into book covers by oh, yeah. adding your illustrated type to it. Um, Cause I know some people um, hire two different artists to do book covers and editorial and, you know, design work like that. And it's like, if you can do both, you know, yeah. win, win, win. Absolutely. Yeah. I've definitely heard that, um, like doing, I, I kind of have a more of a children's book illustration style. And mm -hmm. so my research looking into agents and publishers and things like that, I've heard that having topography and hand lettering in your portfolio is really like important. A plus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they definitely appreciate that in, in an artist's portfolio. So yeah, definitely want to start working on that. Um, I am starting to um, pick my colors. Oh, cool. Um, so do you normally have like a specific like 
saved color palette that you that you pick no. from? Do you just randomly pick them every single time? Yes. <laughs> That's every really interesting. Every single time, I just, um, I start with what, I don't know why I picked yellow, because I usually don't like working with yellow, like how I mentioned previously, mm -hmm. that be, um, just until recently, um, I went straight away from yellow and purples. But um, I like to pick off of like one primary color that I want to work with and I kind of build it off of that. Oh, cool. Yeah, I, I'm really surprised that you don't have a saved color palette because uh, your Instagram looks like you kind of just like have a saved one? from a saved <laughs> color palette. Yeah. Well, that's good. At least I'm consistent. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's very true. You are very consistent with your colors. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't know. Maybe I probably should. I think it's also, I have a mindset. Um, this is like a pro and also a con. Um, I, for some reason, I think that if it's not new every single time, it's like not okay. I kind of Which get is, that feeling too. Yeah. I, I actually relate to that. I, I always get this weird feeling on like looking through my Instagram feed. I'm like, okay, well, I already did this composition. So I don't want to do that again. I want to exactly. do something new. Even though the funny enough, like usually people will follow you to try to, to see the similar things yeah. over and over again. But like as an artist, you sometimes feel like, oh, I don't want to repeat myself too much. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand um, why people um, are repetitive and do what they do, because then it's very obvious when their style is their style. Yeah. And when people see their um, their artwork out in the wild, they're like, oh, this is who xyz mm -hmm. um which is like very important and however um yeah in my head it's like you're not I feel like you're not challenging yourself if you're doing the same thing you can definitely incorporate like incorporate old elements here and there but I think if it's too much it for me it just seems like a cop-out which is like not a healthy way of working sure because you want to keep practicing what you know you're doing and what you like and if you don't do that enough you're gonna it's you know you're a like being too hard on yourself mm -hmm. and b you can't like perfect something if you don't practice it yeah it's like so, a double-edged sword <laughs> yeah to a certain but, um, extent um, it's a good mindset because you're always trying to work to improve your artwork and just kind of like push yourself forward and and um try to improve so in that sense it's a good it's yes. a good mindset um uh but yeah it can be taken like too far sometimes accidentally yeah i am um trying to do i'm trying to not be as hard as on myself and i will go back into my previous works and like pick out literally copy something copy and paste um a layer into um something i'm working on now and just kind of build off of that um but it's um yeah it's <laughs> it's hard to get out of that mindset of like you have to always be doing something new yeah but <clears throat> i think that's why um it seems like i'm always like pumping out a lot of work on social which i am i'm definitely working quite a bit but um there was a really long time, I think it was like a year where if I'm not posting something new every day, I'm falling behind, mm -hmm. which is like, so it's like very toxic. Yeah. If, um, yeah. Yeah. Especially as an artist, because um, people that aren't artists, I feel like sometimes don't realize how much time art takes and with social media, how fast we consume um, posts and media and everything. Um, it can be, it can be really challenging for an artist to keep up with that, um, because it takes yeah. so much time to do just one post. Um, so I, I mean, I definitely find myself feeling that way when I'm not posting enough or anything like that. I kind of get hard on myself, but then I have to remind myself that it's totally fine. It's just social media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that, um, it's, very difficult especially for people um who are more digital content creators like for social media to not think that way because um their job is instagram yeah. like my life oh, no, exactly all my work comes from instagram yeah and um i'm there so there's like a new algorithm now apparently 
where um, if you post too much at a you know a day or mm. um, it doesn't cycle through your followers because I've noticed that if I post something today I will get more likes tomorrow or more engagement tomorrow or the next day and but if I posted it again the, the next day everything will be shifted because yeah. that post is like irrelevant now to Instagram so I've been po- which is good for me because I've been posting less and I'm less I feel less pressured to post constantly because when it was like um, chronological it's like gotta post at 12 gotta post at noon yeah. every day have to pump it out yeah totally understand that speaking of social media so um uh, like you, you were talking about how you get the majority of your work through Instagram. So yes. do you feel like Instagram is a really a uh, pivotal part of your art business? Um, do you find that brands find you the majority through Instagram or do you find that, um, you're contacted through other ways? Um, I think it's a little bit of, um, word of mouth now and Instagram mm-hmm. definitely, definitely in the beginning, it was, um, more Instagram heavy. But um, I think um, when I did more events in New York, um, I would see people like out and about or they will see my work like at an event and they will contact me in that way. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, Instagram definitely is a super big part of me getting jobs. Yeah. That's the same for me too. I get the majority of my work through Instagram. Um, I feel like, uh, I think I've talked about this on stream before, uh, is that uh, Instagram is kind of turning into almost like the new portfolio for photographers and artists. It's an easier way for companies to find artists uh, just by searching through hashtags and stuff like that. Yeah. So it can be uh, it can be really helpful for the artists to be able to get exposure that way for, for new clients. It's um, interesting because I never think that people will look through hashtags, but people actually do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I use hashtags, but I didn't think that people actually look through them. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like people actually follow hashtags too. Like certain, like if it's a hobby of theirs or something like that, they'll follow the hashtag. I did not know that. Well, now I'm happy that I've been hashtagging and that it's been kind of working maybe. Yeah. Don't know the turnaround, um, what the turnaround of each hashtag is, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I like turned off like the touch, um, what, like before there was like a blue um, touch sensitivity thing to show mm. you guys what I'm doing, but I couldn't really see what I was drawing. So I turned it off. So I'm really sorry. Please. <laughs> That's all right. I don't know if that was like helpful to some viewers or not. So this is where I would use like the ruler (laughs) tool again to make this a straight line because that is definitely not straight. Do you typically color the background first or is do you just kind of like just go with your gut and start wherever? Um, It's actually whatever. I'm feeling in the moment. <laughs> I do the same thing. <laughs> it's very, um, yeah, it's just, I don't really have like a method, like a step one, step two, step three method, um, which could be helpful in situations like this because I could explain my process a little bit better. But nope, sorry. <laughs> This is it. <laughs> we get what we get. <laughs> just, just a mess of me trying to use this ruler. <laughs> and so what brush are you using right now? Is this just hard round? This is a vector basic round. Oh, okay. So sometimes I use, do use, a, um, where is it? The basic hard round. Um, but I found that, you know, this vector brush is actually um, a lot smoother. Hmm. Do you work in vector uh, in fresco a lot uh, for like clients that want a, a large scale project? Um, yes and no. I mean, because this is already like, um, because I like this brush, it's obviously like helping with um, the vectorizing process afterwards. 
but I usually just vectorize everything afterwards in Illustrator. Oh, okay. And oh. I know that like, I don't Good. have like that much texture in um, my work. I don't, you know, I don't add a bunch of like different watercolor brushes and like stuff like that. So it's easier for me to vectorize because it's all pretty like flat and like big shapes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I noticed uh, like a lot of your work on your Instagram is um, just like very uh, like flat, very bold, very bright shapes, um, which and a lot of it's outlined in white, which I think is really nice. It's, it makes it really pop. Yeah. I love the white. Painting with white. I love using white and I always sketch with white. But then when you paint with white, oh gosh, so many layers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially if I'm like using a dark blue background and it's like, well, I just, you know, really made it hard for myself. <laughs> yeah. What kind of paints do you use for murals? Do you have any recommendations? Um, I use, um, I used to use um, Home Depot's Bear house paint exterior, but I switched to Sherwin-Williams for Lowe's, at Lowe's. And I think they also have another brand called Velspar, Velpar, mm -hmm. Vespa. Something with a V. Yeah, yeah, um, it's something like that. Yeah, and I, but I usually use Sherwin Williams now. Um, yeah, very cool. Um, what about any like brush recommendations? Do you just kind of like use whatever Lowe's has, or? So um, I'm so happy I switched to Lowe's, but there <laughs> was used to be a paintbrush called the Shortcut. I like can I should be a spokesperson for this brush <laughs> <laughs> but it is it's for trimming like window mm. trimming but mm. it is so good and it gives you perfect lines and it holds a decent amount of paint and it just paints so smoothly but recently me and my assistant Danielle we were painting in Michigan we went to Lowe's because um I was really stressed out because I'm, I'm trying to to switch over to Lowe's and I was like, oh no, but like the shortcuts at Home Depot. But then we went to Lowe's and we found an even better brush. <laughs> nice. And it's also a shortcut and it's also, it's also called a shortcut, but it is Lowe's version. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's perfect and it's amazing. And everyone should use it. It's like kind of small. So it fits in the palm of your hand. So you're not holding this giant paintbrush with a stem or um, I mean like a handle you're just like it just like sits in your palm and it's like angled and it's just like it's beautiful it's amazing <laughs> everyone go cool. buy it <laughs> sponsor me <laughs> <laughs> Mallory says Valspar that is what it's called Valspar. Okay, cool. <laughs> sorry I like don't know yeah I just remember it being a V and it's like purple on white or something yeah. more of a visual person than a remember words same person. I'm a very visual person. I think that's pretty common for artists. We do, we do a uh, visual, we work in a visual medium. So we kind of yeah. think visually. Thank you a lot. Uh, Tara has a question. Uh, they yes. say, how do you vectorize your artwork in Illustrator? Do you have to trace over your artwork with the pen tool in Illustrator? Um, so there is that image trace, um, like um, there's like a control and it's image trace and you can, it basically like outlines it for you. However, I barely, I use that to the most like basic, um, I don't use that to like vectorize everything completely. I definitely use it to see what like it automatically does for you to, you know, kind of speed up the process. And I go back in and use like the pen tool to like, you know, mess with it and make sure it's perfect and the lines are good. Um, but. Yeah, I use like the image trace for like the very, very beginning stages because it can definitely like mess up your lettering and not make like the right curves and angles. Right. Yeah, I actually personally don't have very much experience in Illustrator. Um, that's another thing that I would really like to start learning just to for the sake of being able to know how to vectorize things, um, especially if I started doing uh, topography. Um, yeah. I'm Using sure the, there's uh, like a different way that um, is more efficient, but there's so many different ways to do things in Photoshop, Illustrator, and all the apps. Um, 
But if there's like a more efficient way, you guys can let me know because I'm always looking for more efficient ways to do stuff. I remember um, back when I first started streaming, I never used to use any keyboard shortcuts at all. And uh, I definitely heard a lot of that from my, my viewers telling me to start <laughs> using keyboard shortcuts. Eventually I did and it benefited me definitely. <laughs> I just like forget um, yeah. that they're, they exist. And also I don't remember, I'm not like good at like control X, W, K, blah, 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 <laughs> is X this. And I'm like, okay, there's just so many. Um, I watched my friend edit a video on After Effects and it was just all shortcuts on the keyboard. Oh, yeah. And I was like, I don't, like, I can't even like learn from you and <laughs> figure out what you're doing. Cause it's just tapping. <laughs> <laughs> Nushin, welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for joining us. Biola, welcome as well. And Mr. Godzilla, hi, good to see you. Ooh, good name, Mr. Godzilla. <laughs> nice. Again, just a reminder, if you guys have any other questions for Steffi, feel free to put them in chat. I will relay them to her. And also, uh, don't forget, in about uh, the last half hour of the stream, we'll be, we will be doing the Artist Spotlight. Um, so if you guys would like to nominate anyone uh, in the community or yourself, feel free to check out the link um, in the tab above the chat. And we will be doing an Artist Spotlight, which is uh, just like spotlighting a portfolio of some awesome artists in the community. Um, and uh, we just kind of like love to shout you guys out and give you guys praise and exposure through the, uh, through the uh, stream. And yeah, so we'll be doing that the last half hour. Ariel says, hello, hello, love this, by the way. That's awesome, Ariel. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're liking the project. Every <laughs> single time I hear like a name that um, I may know, I'm like, are you my friend in real life? <laughs> <laughs> Showing up to say hi. <laughs> um, Tara wants to know, how did you get started with the Museum of Memories? Um, good question. So, um, so this, I started when I was doing a lot, I was like kind of more active in doing like installations and live murals and just like fun events. And my brother actually came up to me and asked me if I wanted to work on a project with him. And it was he and a few other friends, um, our childhood friends actually thought of the idea together and they just asked me what I thought. And I was like, um, yeah, if I can just paint murals all day <laughs> and make installations, of course. Um, but yeah, my brother was the one who actually approached me with the idea. Very um, cool. Yeah, he owns, so he is also um, a creative person. He owns um, some like escape rooms. Oh. Um, yeah. So. So he knows how to like build installations as well, just on a different kind of level. Like he builds installations that people have to like figure out how to get out of, like, mm -hmm. you know, a puzzle. And it's more um, like, it's like situational. Like if, you know, someone does X, Y, Z, then B happens. If someone else does this, you know, control then. So it's a lot of like more, um, it's like you had to figure it out a little bit more. But for um, Museum of Memories, it's literally just like building installations. Mm -hmm. So it was really awesome, like working with him because we um, we think very similarly in terms of like um, like figuring out how stuff works. So whenever there was like an issue in like building, um, like how can we make how can we laser cut this to make sure it looks like perfect? How we can like join these pieces together. We were really good at like going back and forth and um, figuring out the best way to problem solve. That's awesome. That's such a, a cool project to be able to work on with your sibling. Yeah, we um, we actually got a lot closer. Um, 
by working on that together. I we weren't that close in high school. I mean, growing up, I mean, he was my older brother, and we would bicker, mm-hmm. but. It was like just so nice to like hang out with him as like an adult and just like, oh, you're not my stupid older brother and I'm not your <laughs> stupid little sister that was always getting into trouble. Totally. Kristen says in chat, how do you handle the balance, be- balance between murals, running your online shop, museum of memories, and freelance? You are amazing. <laughs> um this is this should not be um I should not promote this but I don't really sleep that much (laughs) (laughs) and I kind of live and breathe like working um I just like love creating so much that it's just like you know it's what I I live and breathe like art so it's really easy for me to just like People ask me what I do during my downtime, and I'm like, I, I make art. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I I never, I've never done anything that's not art related, creating related. I just really love making stuff. And um, yeah, I can't stop. Do you have any other creative hobbies outside of like doing your typical artwork? Like, do you, do you love to cook or do you like knitting or anything like that? Um, I used to bake Mm -hmm. and then I realized who's eating this, not me. Yep. So I should stop. (laughs) Um, but I knitted when I was in high school. So I've tried almost everything. Um, I've did ceramics. I've, um, I love doing wood shop stuff. I love, um, yeah, I tried a lot. Um, but I just don't really have, I have a hard time, um, starting a project and not thinking of how to monetize it. Oh, um, which is, could, be a little bit um toxic because it doesn't turn it's not like therapeutic anymore if everything you do is like how can we like make a profit out of this how can we like kill two birds with one stone and you know make something that i love but also make money off of it um it's like a good and bad thing like a pro and pros and cons um Sure. I totally, totally relate to that. Um, so we had another question in chat, actually, um, from Irfen. I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Um, but they ask, what are your, what projects are you most proud of and why? Oh, um, hmm. I don't really have, um, a project that I am the most proud of because everything I do is like you know I'm proud that I'm still doing what I'm doing and um but I think just like painting murals um every single time I finish one I'm always like okay I'm glad I pulled that off (laughs) because every single time I go into it it's like something could go wrong something could go terribly wrong and I won't be able to do it and finish it um and the texture of the walls is always different. And then um, texture of the wall is always different. Um, the boom lift cannot work and I can not finish on time. Um, the paint will not be the right colors or I just have like an off week where I'm like having a hard time painting. So every single time I like can finish a mural without any mess ups, I'm very, very, very happy. Yeah, for sure. Have you ever had any like crazy stories where you've run out of paint or something like that? Um, well, I have just spilled a whole can of paint on someone's roof. So, oh my gosh, that was was tough. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Um, But ended up cleaning that up. So, (laughs) and, um, I am also a little bit risky, so I don't wear a harness on the boom lifts. 
and there's been times where um I would like <laughs> I would um boot like boom lift myself lift myself all up to like a ledge on the roof or the wall and I'll get off the boom lift and like scale the wall a little bit oh, to get like gosh. a little corner <laughs> that is crazy um, so, um, yeah. I did see, I did see a picture of you on uh, your Instagram of you standing on the very tip top of, the top a, ladder of a ladder with one foot on the ladder. <laughs> I was like, wow, it's good. She's not afraid of heights. Yeah. Um, don't do that guys. <laughs> Definitely not smart. Don't, don't do this at this. home. <laughs> don't do this at home. Um, but yeah, I love the, I love painting large scale murals. Um, there hasn't been anything too crazy with like mess ups. If anything, um, you know, if I run out of paint, buy more paint. Mm -hmm. um, the good thing about like house paint um, is that there's always a, not always, but there's usually a hardware store close to where you're painting or within like driving distance. So if you mess up, you can go buy more. But for spray paint, um, especially if you're using like Montana spray paint or anything that's a little bit not sold in hardware stores, um, there's some places that don't have specialty spray paint stores. So if you run out of spray paint, you got to figure something out. Yeah, for sure. Um, do you, do you have any specific artists that you find the most inspiration from or where do you get your most, most of your inspiration? Oh, um, who do I, who am I looking up at right now? That's, um, I really love flat, um, like graphic work. So I mm -hmm. actually like looking at a lot of graphic design and branding books. Um, but I, Home Sweet Home, Lauren Home is an amazing um, hand letterer. Um, I've looked up to her for a long time. Um, a lot of my friends are really talented as well. Um, Laura Supnik, um, she's a friend and she always, also works with me sometimes. Um, she's a great illustrator. Um, who else? Uh, there's a lot of animators that I really love mm. as well. I want to learn more about animation and get into After Effects a little bit more, but it's definitely harder than I thought. Yeah, Learning. there's a lot that goes into it. My husband does a little bit of animation and After Effects. And whenever I watch him work, I'm like, how do you even know how to do any yeah. of this? <laughs> <laughs> um, who else? Um, I can't, I'm real, like I said, I'm really bad with like names. Um, I have, I'm better with visuals. So I can like picture their artwork in my head. I mean, Jade Purple Brown, um, she is... She does a lot of portraits and symmetrical, like graphic design work, um, illustrations. She's really awesome as like in really great use of colors. Mm. Um, but I don't really do portraits that much. I I used to when before I did lettering. Um, I did more like objects and um, not words. Um, but yeah, we have a very like we look at drawing portraits very similarly. So this is um, an interesting way that I like to do my thick block letters. Um, I know some people like to draw out squares and build it in. I like to just make my brush real thick, write it out, hmm. and then erase. Oh, so you're kind of like carving it away almost. You're like sculpting yes. it. So this is basically my ass. And I'll just oh, like. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Like um, I know people, a lot of people ask me for block letter tips. Um, this is like a more, this for me is like really sim like a more simple way. So you don't have to actually, you know, draw it out like, um, like, you know, you don't have to do it like this. Yeah, it seems like uh, it's a big time saver. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can definitely draw out like this if you want the inconsistency and just like more stylistic. And sure. um, yeah, 
but I don't really do it like that. I just get my big brush, make it um, thick, and then adjust afterwards. Oh, there you go. I noticed that you're actually drawing larger than your initial sketch too. You're kind of going inside the the ruler lines instead of. Uh, yeah, so this is what annoys people. <laughs> <laughs> this is what bothers people because they'll be like, "Why'd you sketch it out like that if you're not even gonna draw it?" Like I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> no, I totally, I, no I totally get it. Um, I mean, it's it's kind of the same thing with doing a thumbnail process for like your initial composition or sketch. It's just kind of gives you an idea of where it's like it's like a guideline, just like a template to kind of help yeah. you see it visually um and then you just kind of just work over top of that and um usually i don't like erase until the very end so then i can see how everything looks um so it it usually looks kind of weird um because it'll look like the thing with like this rounded brush is that you have to keep in mind that like you have to overextend because if you stop like right at the line you're gonna have to square it out right so if you have to like draw underneath so then you can like cut in cut like erase it away and um, i know like the spacing is not um the kerning is like off but that is all gonna be fixed uh, don't come about me guys <laughs> Voodoo Val says, home sweet, well, home sweet Home will actually be at Adobe Max. Oh, cool. I wish, um, I tried going to Adobe Max last year, but I, um, I, was, I think I was painting. I always miss it every year, but it's good that this year is all online. Yeah. So. Yeah, Adobe, uh, Adobe Max is actually going to be free and fully online this yep. year. So it's fabulous. Um, home sweet home. Yeah, I actually met her when I was still in school. We she had like a meet and greet at um a bar, um like arcade um called Barcades in Williamsburg here in um Brooklyn, and I met her. And um this was when I wasn't doing like lettering at all, and she was looking for interns, and I was like. I've never really done anything, but can I intern for you? <laughs> and obviously I was like not chosen because I had zero experience. <laughs> I was just hopeful. <laughs> but, um, I'm glad that like we um, do some projects together here now and again. And it's like nice to come full circle. Um, yeah, so this. Uh, Nushin in chat is wondering uh, if you um, ship to Canada from your store. I do. Um, so international shipping for USPS is definitely not the cheapest. And um, as I know, so I do ship internationally. The shipping cost is just like a lot more. And it can sometimes be not worth it to buyers because, you know, the shipping can almost be as much as like the product itself. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a stockist in Canada, though, called Riley Gray. Um, I'm not sure um, if they still have, like, how many products of mine they still have. But I was, um, they were selling some of my products through their store for a while. Oh, very cool. Do you have a lot of um, stores that uh, buy your products, like, wholesale from you? I do. Um, I do. I just want to adjust this. Um, I have a list somewhere. I can also put that up on my website. Um, but yeah, I do. I've been trying to do more wholesale this year just because I've been traveling a lot more. And um, I like, I have people fulfilling orders here in New York. But, you know, I it's not the same when I can't touch you know the packages myself i like being able to like touch every order i sent out because it makes me feel like i'm giving someone a gift rather than like a transactional yeah. like target big corporation thing but as i'm getting busier and busier it's harder to do that and oops um and i have to let go of that 
personalization, personable part to it sooner or later because it's just not scalable to forever hand letter every single person's order. Yeah. Like that's just not going to work out in the future if I want to grow. And I've been having a really hard time like introducing that into my orders and I've been slowly not doing it as much but people notice and it's like heartbreaking because you know people will message me and be like we thought you were gonna hand letter our name oh I'm, like, I'm sorry <laughs> I think um, I think it kind of goes back to uh the idea that I think sometimes uh consumers don't realize how much time all of these things take like you're not just hand lettering one person's name on an envelope you're hand lettering no like hundreds know. yeah and um, it's like it can I'm be sorry. hard for people no it's okay it can be hard for people to relate to that because they just see their one package you know yes um but i do want to like find something that i can i don't know maybe i've been thinking of like maybe just making my own font typeface mm. font and then just like having the notes typed out in my handwriting but it's still not the same yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it's something that I'm gonna have to let go if I want to keep if I want to like you know get bigger because um as right now I'm fulfilling in my studio and I have my amazing friend and assistant Laura help me when I'm out of town but like what if it becomes too much for her I need to hire like a fulfillment like facility, then they're not going to write my packages. <laughs> <laughs> like they don't care. You know, they're just like people shoving stuff in a bag and then yeah, throwing it into like the USPS truck. Um, I'm curious, how, how did you go about um, the process of starting to wholesale your products? Um, because I, I've personally um, kind of started working on an Etsy and stuff like that. And I've considered the idea of wholesaling future products, um, but I've never um, gone about like pricing or anything like that, or even knowing how to contact shops for wholesaling or like inquiries or anything like that. Do you have any advice on that? Yeah. Um, so at first, I think I just posted it online somewhere. Like, hey guys, by the way, I'm doing... Um, I, I'm available to do that. Cause I think that a lot of people, uh, when they see small businesses, they just think that they're um, fulfilling online alone, can, you know, just right. to the consumer. Um, but I think I just ended up going, telling um, people on social media, like, oh, by the way, I'm available to do this. I haven't advertised it. And I, I don't know really how, to go about it but if you if you want to chat hit me up and then from there I realized that I need a line sheet um and I just made like a little deck of um I'll be like have a nice day and then they'll be organized in different categories so it'll be like stickers and I'll have all my stickers and photos laid out sticker number one sticker number two xyz and then um if you it gets a little bit confusing because the more products you have the more you have to organize in a way where it can be easily adjusted. Yeah. Because I did, I started doing stickers and then holographic stickers and then sticker sets and then sticker sheets. So um, it began to the point where it's like, are all everything under the category stickers, all those things. So they're labeled sticker one to sticker a hundred or are they sticker one, sticker sheet one. Yeah. Sticker set one. So that's like what got really confusing for me, the organizing part. But um, I think it's really, I think it's the easiest way is to just make your deck and have um, all your products, like photos, like, and number everything. And then just have the information on the very bottom. Like, oh, my minimum order is, you can say like a hundred, um, whatever makes sense to you. Cause you want to make sure it's worth it. Cause if you're, if your minimum order is 50, you might as well just sell it on your site, you know? So you'd like, yeah. oh, my minimum order is like 100 or uh, 200, whatever you um, decide. And um, the shipping cost is a flat rate of this. And you just send them out to people and be like, I can adjust if needed. 
Um, I can work with consignment if you want to start with that first, where you just send people the shop their um, your products and then see how well they do mm-hmm. as a, like a trial basis. And then from there, if it does really well, it's like, okay, now we can do wholesale. Yeah. I, was, awesome. I think that was a lot of information. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I love hearing it and I'm sure our viewers love hearing it as well. Yay. Good. Okay. Sorry. If I'm <laughs> rambling. And, uh, I'm curious, like, um, how did you go about finding, um, like your supplier for your stickers and stuff like that? Um, I Google like yeah. crazy. I know. And then sometimes people reach out to me. Um, I know I get a lot of this question as well. Like, like who is your supplier? And, um, I'm not like opposed to telling people it's more so what works for me might not work for you and the pricing might not work for you and the quality might not work for you and i don't want to make that decision for them yeah because there's like so many different different vendors out there and most of the time if you just you know um google custom this there's like a lot of stuff pops up and you just get quotes or you can like literally mock up very specific items like if you want it, I know people want to make mugs. If you just mock it, like Photoshop that, mock it up real quick, just send that mock up to different mug manufacturers and be like, do, is this something that you think you can do? So they know exactly what you want and then they can say yes or no to it. That's really interesting. Yeah, I didn't I didn't even think about that, like making a mock up, yeah. Yeah, I think cause um, there's some, like obviously there's some like manufacturers that, um, are there's a lot of manufacturers in you like us that are just the middleman Mm -hmm. for the factories in overseas so um there might be like a language barrier because i definitely worked with a company that's like oh we are based in america but their factories are not here so they have to like translate what they like what i want to these uh, manufacturers uh, manufacturers factories overseas and there can be like miscommunication a little bit confusing so if you literally provide exactly what you want then you when you get the product and not exactly what you sent them it's like something's wrong (laughs) yeah because like what usually when you're um buying you know products you're buying a lot at once right minimum order quantity is not small you can't just get a one-off object like item without paying um like a, you know, decent amount of money for it. So you want to make sure it's like exactly what you want. And cause you don't have, you know, we don't have money to just throw away to do trial and error. Um, which, but there is a lot of trial and error in the beginning. I messed up a lot and it was really frustrating, but I mean, it's all a learning experience and can't be too upset about that. Yeah. And most of the time, if you like, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, I said most of the time, if, um, you mess up on an item, you can like your buyers and your audience are usually pretty accommodating and like understanding that if you're like, Oh, this is, this item is like defected. It's not the Mm -hmm. right color that I wanted. Most of the time they don't care and they still like the item. Um, and they'll buy it at a discounted price or, you know, I like getting seconds. I like getting mess ups because it's like imperfections are cool. Um, and I'm, you know, it's nice supporting small businesses and know that like, God, this is your, like the product that isn't perfect, but I'm going to get it. And I'm going to also get the perfect one. Now I have two and one cheaper than the other. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. Especially it's kind of, it can be kind of fun to get a product that has an imperfection because it's unique then. Yeah. Um, Andrea, you know that this person tried and, you know, went through trial and error to do it. Yeah, definitely. All the work that gets put into it. Mm-hmm. Um, Andrea in, in chat says, are you picky about the businesses you sell to, like their mission statement and background? Um, yes. So in the past, I wasn't just because I was like, oh, I'm so excited. This store wants to sell my work and or um this company wants to work with me, but, um, after like 
two years, two or three years of freelancing, I've definitely been more picky about my clients just because, you know, you want to you want to make sure you're in good company. And um, especially now, it's like you never really know how people are until like other stand. Oops, I just realized I did down the same ladder, uh, layer. Um, people, can, people can be really good at hiding, you know, their um, intentions. Mm-hmm. And I definitely worked with a company um, that I was in love with and loved, like heavily supported. And then found out they had some ethical, um, made some bad jokes or weren't the best. And it was really upsetting because... I really like them. Yeah, and of course. I thought we were like friends. I was like, you, I don't want to be friends with someone that's like not nice. Yeah, of secretly course. to other people. So, yeah, I am careful with, um, more careful now. But um, for our stores, though, for wholesale, I usually just ask them where they're from, like where they're located, what kind of goods that they sell, what other items are in the store. So um, I know that. Um, there's like a diversity in products and style. Uh, Shauna Lynn in chat says, yay, Steffi. So we have Steffi oh, Lynn, hi. Shauna Lynn, and actually my middle name is Lynn as well. So we have Cody Lynn oh also. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, I love the Lynn's <laughs> our drawing club. <laughs> Uh, Voodoo Val says, the way that you organize your wholesaling sounds a lot like how you would organize for an artist alley for a convention. Um, do you oh. do conventions too? No, I've never done one. I would like to. I don't really yeah. know um, that much about it. But um, I just also think it's a little bit difficult for me to... Um, it, I have to prioritize and um, what... Yeah, I, I would like to do a convention. It's just that um, because my hands are so full with other projects, I think it, I always forget because it takes so long to prep and like there's yeah. a lot that goes into stuff like that. And um, I don't like doing something that I can't completely focus on, even though I'm like really good at multitasking. It's like, that's a big, big thing. I'm kind of the same way. I always want to put 100% of myself into everything that I do. And if I can't, then it bothers like, me so yeah. much. <laughs> like it has to be perfect. Yeah. I think that goes back to the whole mindset of wanting everything to be perfect on social media too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's also just um. You want to present yourself in a good way. You mm -hmm. don't want to half-ass anything. Yeah. Because then, like, people will see that and be like, "Well, you know, this clearly doesn't seem like this was on the top of her mind when she went about it. I don't know if I want to work with her because what if the project that we're working on together is not the number one thing on number one project? It's like good to multitask, but you have to. I have to like make sure I'm like these four hours is strictly for this yeah and nothing else so in about uh six or so minutes you guys we're going to be doing the artist spotlight where we are going to spotlight one of the amazing artists in our community and if you would like to uh submit yourself or anyone else that you know or love um you can check out the artist spotlight tab above the chat So you have your color palette to the side there. So are you just kind yeah. of like randomly picking a color and just seeing if you like it? Do you ever like pick a color and then like swap it out and like try different variations of the color palette? I do. I'm probably going to swap out um, this blue back here. I actually already did. Like you can see that um, this baby blue and the background blue are, are not the same. Mm. Um, yeah, I I kind of just mess around with it a lot 
Um, but it's like, you know, if you're drawing on top of like a light color, of course, like this or burnt orange is going to stand out more than because originally it was yellow and I thought the yellow and purple looked really good together. But um, the contrast is like not good enough, like not contrasted enough. So it was hard to read. And um, I'm trying to like do more work, um, create more work that um, has more contrast for more inclusivity because mm -hmm. um, like for people with like visual impairment, like color blindness and stuff like that, it could be hard, especially with like words to really absorb the information that's on the page. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, a, a really cool thing, um, the Adobe Color, I think it was a recent update, um, the website Adobe Color, where you mm -hmm. can like find color palettes and stuff, they actually incorporated a new system where you can check if your color palette is, um, is accessible to all colorblindness. Yeah, I thought was I actually really cool. been using that. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And, um, there's another website called um, Coolers. Oh yeah, uh, it's like similar. Coolers or Coolers, yeah. Yeah, it's like colors, but with two O's. So yeah. It's coolers. And then you can see like people with, you literally have like, there's like a little tab on the side that's um, like, if these colors were being viewed by someone ha that has proton name, I don't know how to say it guys, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't it's either. Like, yeah, P something <laughs> where it's like, you can't really see, um, I'm probably, I don't really remember, but like people who can't really read like reds, mm -hmm. then you can see the, uh, the difference between the color palette from like normal, um, no normal not normal um like original version and then like one with people who have the um impairment can see and you can see them side by side and it's cool to like adjust like the contrast and like make sure that it is um you know appealing for everyone yeah i think that's really awesome yeah okay let's do Everyone is in chat just seems to be having a conversation about Star Wars somehow. Oh, <laughs> I guess because General Kenobi is someone named in chat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shauna Lynn says, I love this color palette. I do too, Shauna. It's, it's really beautiful. Thank you. I don't use dark purples that often, but here we are. So I noticed that you actually now at this point have turned your sketch completely off. So now you're not even using your under sketch, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Yeah. So it's like really, really, really little. I'm not even, yeah, I, I get like this. I'm just like, I don't even, I don't need this right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm making like the block letters again. So I'm just drawing it out like big and then I can go back in and make it and cut it. It's my secret secret. Um, I guess it's not a secret anymore because I'm doing it because I watched other people's like um, I watch other people's time lapse and they like literally block it out and like draw it out like a and I'm just like, well, I just write it out and erase it. So <laughs> I actually, yeah, I've actually never been very good at um, blocking letters out like that. I think if I were to do typography, I'd probably do it the way that you're doing right now, just with a big letter and then just kind of sculpt it. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of how I sketch too, is I kind of just sketch really messy and then I sculpt it away. And I go back and start erasing. So we have about one minute until we do cool. the art spotlight. So if you have Yay. like a like a spot where you want to stop, just kind yeah. of like whenever you're ready. Um, I will just stop now before All I right. finish the W. Sounds good. So we are going to start switching over to the artist spotlight segment, you guys. Um, we are spotlighting. Let's see. We have Sergio. One sec, you guys. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no. I just turned off my iPad.
we go. Sorry about this, guys. Having just some technical difficulties. One second. There we go. Now it's popping up. There we go. Okay. Awesome. So uh, this is the artist that we are spotlighting today. It is Sergio Picasso Ferro. I hope I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> um, uh, he mostly does artwork in Photoshop and Illustrator. It looks like uh, he does a lot of um, like portrait work and uh, very cool illustrative um, like vector work maybe um, mm -hmm. in Illustrator, like a lot of like uh, very geometric um, like uh, pieced artwork together. Um, he's got some portraits on the bottom too as well. Um, so Steffi, are there any uh, pieces that like kind of just like pop out to you that you would like to check out? Um, I really like, wait, can you go up a little bit more? Up, yep. Um, I, on the left-hand side next to, well, I guess both of them, like the um, one with the buildings and one with the trees. Oh, well, this the, one right hydro, here? Um, no, the one above. Well, that one, one too. The, yeah. Like these, <laughs> These three off to the side. Yeah, that one and the one to the right of that one. Awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out this um, this page. So he's got a little copy that says, this is a personal project. I worked vectors on Adobe Illustrator and I applied color correction and effects on Adobe Photoshop. My idea was to show a nice afternoon with beautiful light and a couple running on Central Park. Follow me, follow my Instagram. Follow Sergio's Instagram, everyone. Um, wow, this is oh, beautiful. Wow. I didn't, um, I, um, it, it looked, I liked the colors a lot when I first looked at it, but I'm um, now I really like it because there's like people on it. Cool. Yeah. I really oh. love how, um, he kind of separates all of his shapes into very, like, it almost looks very like futuristic and yeah, <laughs> like oh, a bunch of geometry and stuff like that. It's very cool. I like that the middle um, part of the piece where the subjects are is lighter than the rest. It's like basically highlighting them. Um, yeah. And I like that. It looks really, I want to go running in Central Park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did a really great job um, putting that, that focus in the center of the artwork. Mm -hmm. And then it's, here's uh, the process. Yeah, the map. Here. The process is so insane. Yeah, so cool. The pen tool. I wish I worked like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his process seems very clean because he does everything in Illustrator with very like right angle. Yeah. And, everything. and then here's some different uh, color variations too. Very cool. Oh, cool. Oh, there's a lot. <laughs> oh, I love that. Um, the um, one on the bottom right hand corner. Yeah. That one's yeah. Oh, this, this set, this set is really nice. I never work in like a greener tone, like this middle one. And I always see, pe I see a lot of illustrators um, use this like palette where it's like more of that green. And mm -hmm. it's so nice. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Yeah, I don't like my mind just doesn't like think to use those colors. And it's very pretty. Oh. <laughs> like it. <laughs> like it. Um, let's see. I think somebody in chat said they wanted to see the Baby Yoda one. So oh. let's check out. Of course, they were talking about <laughs> Star Wars in chat. So. <laughs> oh my God, cute. Uh, here's some Mandalorian uh, artwork, some fan art, it looks like. Aw, so <laughs> Baby Yoda concentrating. Okay. Very cool. All of these like concentric circles and everything. Mm -hmm. It's it's really nice. It kind of draws your eye into um, Baby Yoda's face. I Very wonder cute. what Baby Yoda is thinking about. Yeah, looks like Very he's trying to use the force. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome! Mandalorian. Of course, uh, I'm sure Voodoo Val is loving this right now because she's uh, very known for her Star Wars artwork. <laughs> <laughs> She loves Star Wars. Mm -hmm. 
the thing cool. that's tough about lettering is that you don't really do that much fan art right. <laughs> unless you do quotes but like you don't really draw characters unless you like also incorporate illustration into your um lettering but um i've never actually done that many um like quotes or subjects from movies and shows that's true. Oh. I never really thought about that. I guess you could, yeah, you could do like a, a quote from a movie or something mm -hmm. like dialogue that a character said or something like that. But yeah, yeah, I actually do fan art a decent amount, not in recent time, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, I love doing fan art. Yeah, these are really beautiful work. Um, I can't imagine how long these must have taken. Um, <laughs> all of these, look at all, wow. like all of these little uh uh, thin lines in the background like there's so much detail to it it's it's really I wonder awesome. how long it took um yeah how long this took yeah oh and then here's... oh my god together oh, they're together <laughs> that's, that's cute. so cute <laughs> <laughs> his little foot is sticking out that's cute <laughs> very cool which one else can we see? What about um, the, um, I think this, I'm guessing this is the Empire State Building. Oh, this one right here. Yeah, Empire State. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Oh my gosh, really embarrassed if I was, if I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's perfect for you because you're from New York, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is wow. a personal project. I love to illustrate buildings and I think that it's one of my favorite work. I think Empire State is a very powerful structure, elegant, um, and follow my Instagram. <laughs> wow wow there's so much little details in this side of this building all of the windows and like even some of the windows are lit and everything like that's yeah so oh my gosh I can't wait to see the process at the bottom <gasps> oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> I like how he shows this this yeah. is very awesome yeah, that's something really cool about Behance is that it's not just one image, um, mm -hmm. like having being able to have a, a full project um, and being able to show like a full case study like this. Um, it's really cool to be able to see an artist yeah. process like we were talking about earlier. Oh my gosh, all of these, awesome. all these, like there's so many points on the skyline down yeah. below. You can't even see anything other than the cyan color. <laughs> I'm staring at this. I'm just like. I, you, he probably stared at this page, that program for like hours, just like eyes. Yeah. My eyes hurt. This is amazing. I'm very envious of being able to create like this. I wish I was talented. Oh my God, I'm the, all the different colors on the bottom. Yeah, and then the, the black and white version is really great because you get to see the values. Yeah. Um, they did a they did a really great job having the the light values on the top so you can see the um the silhouette of the skyline that looks really nice mm -hmm. oh and there's more color variations on the bottom yeah oh wow the green is really cool it's the like green is very cool very uh independence day alien yeah <laughs> i'm really drawn to the left one yeah um it's just like glowing it's just yeah. so um it looks very godly. <laughs> yeah, like golden hour, golden hour, yeah. oh, warm yeah. sunlight lighting. Yeah, that's beautiful. Anthony says, so much work has gone into this. Wow, I know, right? Seriously. Sergio, if you're in chat, amazing work. Um, Jan says, this reminds Thumbs me of Art up. Deco. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Should we look at a portrait one or the gorilla? Yeah. The gorilla is cool too. This one right here? Yeah, is that a gorilla? Uh, this is actually uh -huh. a character named Hellboy. Oh, uh, oh my gosh, sorry guys. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. Um, he's Drag a me. <laughs> comic book character. <laughs> Hellboy, awesome. This is super great too. The texture um, is very, very yeah. nice. The texture pops out uh, a lot. This one actually has, looks like it has a little bit more texture mm -hmm. than the other work. It's kind yeah. of gives it like a gritty feeling. Oh, and he has his initial little sketch here too. Oh, sick. I like that. I like that he, you, can, he, um, you can see and tell that he like draws it out first on paper and then builds it. Yeah. So it's not all just like digital on 
on the computer. Yeah. So yeah, it looks like his process, like, yeah, like you said, like he, he draws it out in pencil and then mm -hmm. he literally like takes it and like creates a structure with it. Like it's, it's very um, architectural the way that he works. Mm -hmm. It's very neat. I'm like going to get off this later and just like Google who Hellboy is. <laughs> Time for a comic book I lesson. Like, I feel like I failed. <laughs> Here I am thinking I'm doing so well. <laughs> I'm like, gorilla. No, it's totally fine. <laughs> oh, and they even did like a, a mock-up um, oh, poster nice. of that. It looks really nice. I like that. It's got some nice That's contrast cool. against that white brick background. That's so nice. The smoke is just so, it looks so um, realistic. Yeah. I like the texture of it. It's very moody. Yeah, I'm interested how he went from um, the this blocky part, uh, like blocking out the smoke here, mm -hmm. to the very fluid smoke that we see here. Yeah. I'd, I'd be interested to see that in between part and mm -hmm. how how he got there. I think I kind of want to check out this Taj Mahal one. Yeah. Um, like I said, like his work is very architectural, so it would be mm -hmm. interesting to see more buildings, like actual wow. architecture. Yeah, this is beautiful. Look at the trees. So it's like, I'm like staring so closely at my screen. <laughs> um, and the reflections too of the trees and the water. Yeah. And like the, the sparkly glowing effects of the mm -hmm. sunlight. Yeah, that's beautiful. And how actually the the water, um, like all the reflections in the water are all orange tone too. Yeah. Um, so they kind of made it like a like everything is orange sepia toned. Mm -hmm. That's really pretty. All the black and white is really pretty too. Yeah. Dang oh, stretch. oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So much planning. Yeah. Crazy. Wow. Oh wow. So here's like all the flat the mm -hmm. flat shapes without the like lighting effects and stuff like that. Oh, this one's like zoomed in. You can see like the extra details on um the building, like with the lines and stuff. Wow, it's so detailed. Super detailed work always really impresses me because I don't have the patience. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, super here's a letter. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. My style is super simplistic because I don't have the patience to spend hours and hours and hours on yeah. one piece. <laughs> so, yeah, super detailed work is always really fascinating to me. Ooh, that um, small, uh, the purplish. Oh, yeah. More reddish one on top of, yeah, the yeah top right. So good. Yeah. I love that one. Those bright colors are really pretty. It almost looks like Kool-Aid, like <laughs> super bright it's colors. It's like it. awesome to see all these side by side and how each one really changes with just like a simple color palette change. It's just like, yeah. it's just such a different effect and mood. Yeah, exactly. The whole mood changes. Yeah. Like it's almost like a different time of day for each one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Super pretty. I think we have time for maybe like okay. one or two more. Um, do you have any other suggestions or would you like me to pick one? Um, is there anybody in the chat that's interested in seeing any of them? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, would any of you guys like to suggest one that we can take a look at? <laughs> uh, Shauna says doing fan art is really enjoyable. Yeah, I, I love doing fan art. Um, it's a, it's a nice break if I'm having some art block for my own, like personal original artwork, mm -hmm. I can just kind of like sketch up a pre-existing character and, uh, it kind of gets me through that. Oh. Sorry, there was a fly in my face. <laughs> <laughs> um, N says, I want to see the boat. So that maybe the sailing boat. Yeah, this one's really pretty. I this love. One? Oh yeah. wow, yeah, the um, the contrast between like the really warm tones of the sand and the cool tones of the sea is really pretty. Wow. Oh, interesting to see like how um, 
the reference photo. Oh, yeah. And um, the initial, like, build. Oh, wow. I like how he does it step by step. Oh, not step by step, but like, well, kind of step by step. Um, how he build it up. Very awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. It's it's so interesting um, for me, always for any artist to see how an artist will simplify an object in their own style. Um, yeah. So like he took this photo of these trees and then he kind of just like turned them into very simplistic. Yeah. Kind of round like little humps. Shapes. Yeah. Um, and then like to simplify the leaf shapes, he did it in like different um, size triangles. triangles. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool. And then adding all of the um, the highlight spots and yeah. everything really just makes it sparkle. It's really pretty. I wish he added that man in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's actually, yeah, that's a good point. Like I, I've noticed that um, like for landscapes, I feel like sometimes um, it can be really uh, like add interest to like add humans in landscapes yeah. or like add a character. Um, but it's beautiful nonetheless. I love it. Another so like. Good. <laughs> Yay. So many likes. We're all liking together. Yeah, of course. Cool. <laughs> um, I think I kind of want to check out this one in the top right. Um, Santorini. <clears throat> cool. Um, I love the light of Santorini. It's so special. I want to create a special illustration. I fell in love with the mixture between blue and white colors of the island. Oh yeah. So, oh, there's uh, a person. And, yeah, there's a person. Yay! <laughs> so yeah, a lot in this area, uh, a lot of the buildings are like white mm -hmm. stucco, and then the yeah. blue is like deep blue, and it's such a such a beautiful contrast for the colors. Oh yeah. The hexagon lights. I I like that shape. A yeah. Lot to make it glow, it's very cool. Have you ever used any hexagon borders for your... Um... No, maybe I'll do that tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe we can try something new. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um... I think I really love this one in the middle, like with this mm -hmm. kind of like deep indigo for the for the sea. That's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He has so many like subtle gradients, which yeah. is like really nice. It really adds um, more depth and just like, and this just makes it so much more interesting. Yeah. It's really cool to be able to see that he has the ability to work with so many different color palettes too. Yeah. Um, like for me, when I do my artwork, I usually just do one color palette and stick with it. Um, but like being able to see all of the different variations is really neat for every single yeah. one too. All right. Aww. Well, I think um, we are going to go ahead and head back to your work, Steffi, if uh, you think you're ready to get back to working. Yeah. Awesome. Um, forgot I was working. <laughs> Um, okay, cool. Awesome. I forgot what I was doing for a second. <laughs> cool. Okay. It's so like, after viewing that, I'm like, what am I doing right now? <laughs> no, your work is so great. <laughs> Like, well, I just like want now I'm like inspired with like uh, the different palettes and uh -huh. to like illustrate something else. Um, well, but we're good. We're gonna continue. <laughs> hey, we have tomorrow. We have tomorrow. We can yes. work on some other projects. <laughs> yeah, I love looking at different people's um, all the projects that people have on Behance. Yeah. Um. Cool. Uh, Deepa Carr says I joined so late. No, that is perfectly okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining at any point. Um, we will also, guys, don't forget, we will also be back uh, with Steffi tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. as well. So we're going to be working on another project tomorrow. Yeah, I will um, answer more questions about living, laughing, loving. The 
Um, I like, can't tell if I like these two colors together, but we'll see when I zoom out. Um, the the way that I work, I usually have like a, a color palette, a saved color palette that I pick from. And a lot of the time I'm really indecisive as I'm working about my colors. So I'll just throw a color down. And then as I'm working, like my whole color palette of my painting will change as I like shift things and change things. And I'll use like, um, like I'll lock the transparency a lot of the time and I'll just yeah. color straight over it and just try a bunch of different colors. I think I should try saving palettes. I just, I'm not used to using the same one over and over again, even though it seems like that it seems like I am. Um, but that could be like helpful. Yeah. For me, I, the way that the reason that I, um, would save my palette is just because I personally like, um, all of my artwork to look really cohesive, but you have yeah. the knack of being able to pick your colors without even having a <laughs> saved palette and your Instagram looks very cohesive. So good on you for that. You. <laughs> Kudos. Gosh. It's like, I want to start using more browns. Mm. I've never used a brown in my life, actually. And I had to paint this wall in Michigan and it was this maroon, dark, brownish color. And um, I didn't want to repaint the wall a different color um, because it's already primed and painted. So I was like, okay, how can I build off of this as like the background? And it was like, the it was the hardest thing ever because I've never done this before. Um, it's funny we're kind of like opposites i actually use a lot of brown and a lot of earth yeah time, and you, you use do. a lot of bright you colors like, yeah <laughs> <laughs> um teach me your way so i'll teach you mine <laughs> yeah exactly we'll do a draw this in your style yes challenge. color palette challenge yeah we'll swap I've color palettes for do, a project yeah yeah i've always wanted to do one of those pick a palette in a theme and mm -hmm. then tell people to do it in their style um and it doesn't have to be like obviously like oh draw this animal it's like literally pick this use this palette for for fall fall is a theme and i think that could be fun to challenge people to use different colors yeah for sure um and in chat says how do you cope with the blank page syndrome if you ever get it um I, to be honest, um, I don't really ever let my get myself get like that because I force myself to do I'll So if I'm having a hard time just putting anything on uh, my iPad, I will draw with a pencil mm. or I will paint or I will, um, make a sculpty like a ceramic sculpture i will do something that is creative and then it'll just it'll take me back to drawing and i'll you know um yeah i like just take a break and then just try something else and then um come back to it in like a few hours and usually that helps a lot or i just like work on something that is um that i've already worked on before like i'll re-letter a saying as like a warm-up and that can help me get back into the groove a little bit i don't know if that answered your question yeah that makes sense um like for me for like art block um i know some artists can just like like draw and draw and draw and eventually they'll like push themselves through art block but for me personally like i usually have to take a break even like days at a time i have to take a break and just step yeah. away come back with fresh eyes and be like okay okay, we're good now. <laughs> I just like think that it's important to like um, try something new or practice a skill that you haven't done in a really long time or, um, a, you know, learn a new one. Because um, if you're constantly stimulating your brains in different ways of creating, um, it can like that being, in so being inspired to make an animation, um, I, I don't want to do the same kind of animation like I would do for like a lettered piece. Like in, in my head, if like, oh, if I'm going to do a funny animation, I would, I want to do like a person walking. I don't really naturally think of drawing people when I create just like iPad, you know, fresco art. So 
um, when I push myself to try new programs or, um, you know, do something I haven't done in a really long time. Like I haven't painted on like a piece of paper in a really long time. And um, just that like, you know, exercising, going back to that, like, you know, painting on paper can inspire you and like, you know, switch a um, flip, flip a switch in your brain and it could help you like get back into like the groove. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Steffi. So it is about time to start wrapping up. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. I had a blast hanging out with you Yay. and just doodling and everything. It was a lot of fun. Um, if, if you would like to um, let everyone know like where to mm -hmm. find you on social media, where you're active the most, and maybe give a little bit of a kind of um, preview as to what we're going to be working on tomorrow. Oh, um, uh, so find me on Instagram. I'm have a nice day with two Y's underscore and come back tomorrow and um, I'll do, I'm going to be lettering like a fun holiday pun to make into a card. Awesome. Thanks, Steffi. Thank you guys so much for joining us today and we will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks. Yes. Bye. Bye.